the Children's Librarian at the Southwest branch of the Seattle Public Library. My pronouns are she, her. Today we are here as a part of a STEAM Learning From Home video series that the library is making. We're going to be putting them out all summer long, so check back at spl.org for more videos and to download your Summer of Learning reading log. We've got uh, copies available for download where you set your reading goal and every day you meet your reading goal, you color in a square. We also have those reading logs available at all Seattle Public School food sites, so you don't have to be a Seattle Public student to pick those up either. All right, and before we get started with our video, I would like to acknowledge that I am making this on the land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish tribe. I honor with gratitude the land itself and the Coast Salish people. All right, so today we are going to be doing a Seattle bird report to see what birds I can find in my neighborhood. And today I have some help from some people here. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Um, would you like to introduce yourselves and give me your names, your pronouns, your job title, and your favorite bird? Sure. So my name is Hana, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, I am the Associate Education Manager at Seattle Audubon. Um, I have lots of favorite birds, um, which I think is pretty obvious um, later. Um, but I think today my favorite bird is the turkey vulture. Awesome. Uh, my name is David. I, um, my pronouns are he, him, and I am the Nature Shop Manager at Seattle Audubon. Um, like Hannah, I also have a lot of favorite birds and my favorite bird kind of changes all the time, but um, one that is my, one of my all time favorites that's almost always uh, at the top of my list is the green heron, um, which I'll show you a quick pic right here. It's a sneaky, stealthy little bird right there. And it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Cute. Hannah, can you tell me a little bit about the Seattle Audubon Society? What is it exactly? Sure. So Seattle Audubon is a environmental nonprofit organization that's actually over a hundred years old. We've been around for a really long time. Um, the work that we do is focused on protecting birds and their habitats. Um, we do walks um, in Seattle parks and neighborhood programs like summer camp and um, in school programs um, and community science programs where we count birds and and then things like this where we get to partner with other organizations to talk about birds and our goal um, is to work with lots of different people who live all over Seattle so that everyone in the city gets to enjoy the benefits of having happy birds and healthy nature all around them. Yay! Awesome! Um, thank you. And uh, David, I have a question for you. Um, if I were to ask you, what does a bird watcher look like? What would you say? Mm, that's a great question. Um, so I think the great thing about bird watching is that anybody can do it and it doesn't require any special training or any special gear. Um, and everybody bird watches differently. So bird watchers can look uh, and come in many different shapes and sizes and, and may look differently all the time. So for example, um, you might see a bird watcher outside with a pair of binoculars, something like that, um, which are a really great tool for helping you see birds that are close up that are far away. Um, you might see bird watchers outside with a, something like a field guide, um, which is a, a great book that helps you identify birds that you're looking at. Um, or you might see bird watchers with notebooks taking notes on um, you know, bird observations, you might see bird watchers with uh, art supplies that are illustrating um, birds that they see and cool, cool other nature things that they see. Um, or for example, me, um, I'm an avid skateboarder. Um, it's one of my lifelong hobbies. Um, and when I'm on a nice day, you might find me like out skating in the neighborhood or skating down the bike trail. And when I'm skateboarding, I'm always bird watching as well. I'm listening for bird songs that I might hear. Um, you know, I'm paying attention for little sparrows or juncos that might be uh, crossing the path. Um, and looking out along the water when I pass the water looking for ducks or, or herons that might be, you know, sitting on the, uh, on the water looking for prey. Um, so, you know, a bird watcher might look like a skateboarder passing through your neighborhood. Um, so that's, what, that's what's great about bird watching is anybody can do it. Um, you know, bird watchers can look like anything and it really just requires your eyes, your ears, and a little bit of observation skills. And that's really it. Yay, that's awesome. I love that you skateboard and watch birds. 
I'm not coordinated enough to do either of those things <laughs> uh, individually. Um, all right, so real quick, I'm going to show our audience a video of me going through my neighborhood bird watching. And then when we come back, I'm going to show our two bird experts some pictures of these birds so that they can check them out and help me identify what birds I found. It was a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I passed by all sorts of wonderful things, like Centro de la Raza, Jefferson Park, and of course, the Seattle Public Library Beacon Hill Branch. But I was out here to find birds, like these birds. This bird. This bird. And all of these birds. And I got to take some really fun pictures. Here is the first bird that I found. Um, does this, uh, what kind of bird do you think this is? So I am looking at this bird and I'm noticing a few important details that this bird has. Um, the first is that it's yellow beak. Um, so that's a telltale sign of what this bird is. Uh, the other thing is it's mostly black, but I'm seeing some iridescent feathers. So the feathers that um, maybe change color in the light on its back, plus some um, white spots and a short tail. Um, it's hard to tell how big this bird what's around it, uh, but based on the clues that I'm noticing, I think this is a European starling. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, I also think it's cool that you, that you caught this bird with some food in its mouth, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, one way that I uh, help, one thing that helps me remember um, how to identify a starling is that um, the plumage to me kind of resembles a starry night. It's like, you know, like Hannah said, iridescent and speckly. And um, when you do see it in the light, like it does tend to change based on how the light's hitting it. Um, so it kind of can sometimes look like it's shining um, in a way. So that starling, starry night, like that connection works for me. Um, might not work for other people, but that's what helps me remember um, what this bird is. That's awesome. And I love how there are birds chirping in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's do my next one. David, do you want to start with this one? This is a tough one. Um, this is a tough one for me because there are a lot of birds that are small and brown looking like this. Um, so you kind of have to know a little bit more about the, um, the field markings, but I actually think that the, the beak of this bird helps kind of give it away a little bit. Um, it's what I believe is um, a bird that has what they call dimorphism. So the females and the males look different. They have different color plumages. Um, so I think this is a female house sparrow. Um, so maybe we can pick out some of the field marks that help us uh, determine that. Oh, I disagree with you. I think this is a female house finch. Ooh. There you go. Can, can you tell us one? I think um, just based on the size of the beak. So finches are known for their very thick beaks um, that have uh, lots that, that are made to break open seeds. Mm. And I'm noticing that this, this particular bird has a very thick beak. So my guess is that this is a female house finch. Um, the male house finches right. have red on their heads and their necks and a little bit um, going down to their chests. So that's my guess on this one. But we call in this, in, in, in the birding community, we call this a little brown bird because there's a lot of little brown birds so that many look little brown exactly birds. like this, and they're really hard to tell apart. I think also house sparrows tend to be a little bit stockier, shorter and stockier in their profile, and this bird is a little bit longer, um, so I think that might also help give it away. Okay, so what, what kind of bird is this Great one? bird. So this bird, I think a lot of people seeing this bird immediately call it a blue jay. Um, and they're not completely wrong. It is a blue bird and it is also a jay, but this particular bird is called a Stellar's jay. The blue jay is actually a different type of bird that lives um, on the east side of the United States. 
So we don't actually get blue jades here. So this is a Stellar's jade. Boys are sporting a pretty awesome mohawk. Um, and they're really loud and really gregarious and they steal food from people. Some people call them camp robbers. Um, so this is a stellar yeah, jade. I, um, I see a lot of these in my neighborhood and I, I always love watching them. I also really like how their blue is a little bit um, understated compared to the Eastern Bluebird, which is like really bright, bright blue with, with some white. Um, I like that this blue is uh, darker with, with some black on it. One other thing I really like about Stellar's Jays, if you get the chance to see one up close uh, with binoculars and get to see it for uh, a long enough time, they have a really cool little blue um, eyebrow right above their eye um, that matches the color on the lower part of their body. And um, that's really cool, but it's, it's hard to see unless you can get pretty close, but uh, it's an interesting little field marking. Y'all are really good at identifying birds. You got some um, good tips in there about looking at the field markings. Are there any other, um, or if you want to elaborate on that tip or any other tips that you have for identifying birds? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, um, I really just love observing birds and just watching them. I think that, um, you know, whether or not you can identify a bird, if you watch it long enough, you'll see some really cool and interesting behavior. Um, so my, my advice to people who are, you know, interested in bird watching or, or uh, trying to start bird watching uh, is to just use your senses, you know, try to be as aware as possible as you can, look up, look down, uh, try to put yourself in the mind of a bird. You just try sitting outside, closing your eyes and, and um, listening for a few minutes and try uh, blocking out all the human activity and seeing what kind of bird sounds you might be hearing out there. Nice. And I know another thing that y'all wanted to talk about was bird conservation. So um, what would you like to tell kids about bird conservation? Yeah, so when we're talking about bird conservation, what we're really talking about are things that people can do, that everyone can do at home to protect the birds that live in our city. Um, so one, so I'm gonna talk about three different things that I think everyone can start doing today. Um, so one of the biggest things that everyone can do is making sure that their cats stay inside. Cats are really, really good hunters, and they love catching birds. So keeping our fluffy friends inside um, really helps with that and protects them, um, protects them from other predators and cars too. Um, another thing that we can all do is to make sure that the windows in our houses and apartment buildings are bird safe. Um, now what that means is that um, making sure that we do things to our windows to prevent birds from hitting them because birds can't see the windows there a lot of the times. They think they can fly through it or they see the reflection and don't realize that there is a, a very hard thing that they can run into and hurt themselves on. So um, some things that we can do are you can add stickers to the outside of your window. You can um, use some um, washable paint to, wa to paint the outside of your window. The Seattle Audubon Nature Shop also sells a lot of great products that are made specifically to protect, to make your windows bird safe. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, and the last thing you can do is if you have a yard, um, you can plant native plants, um, plants that are meant to be here living in the Seattle area. They're great um, to provide habitat, but there's, these are all things that anybody can do um, to, to make uh, our city safer for birds. What would you recommend for reading? What books would you recommend for kids who want to get into bird watching? Yeah, so um, Hannah and I both really like um, a field guide from uh, the Stokes. So it's called the Stokes Beginner's Guide to Birds. Um, and there's the, the Western one, which covers Western, uh, the most common Western uh, birds. And that's a really awesome beginner's guide. And, and for kids too, it's, it's color coded. Um, so that's, it's a really easy way to, to flip quickly to what bird you might be looking at based on the primary colors on it. Um, and it's really, information is easy to digest and it's uh it's really great but there's there are a lot of field guides out there and there's another one made by the national geographic it's a kid's guide to birds in north america and that one's a little bit um has a little bit more detailed information um it has some information on activities that you can do to help you enjoy and learn about birds more deeply building bird houses and things like that um and it might be better for um for older kids or um you know parents uh, with kids so you can kind of um, learn a little bit more in depth about some of the species that might be in your area 
And then um, there's also another book that I've been really liking lately that I have here, actually. This is a book that I'm liking a lot lately. It's called How to Be an Urban Birder. And it's a really good um, introduction to how you might go about finding and looking for and identifying birds in urban areas. Um, and it's written by a guy in the UK, but a lot of the things he talks about um, can be applied to almost any urban area in, in the world. Um, so that's a really cool book too. And then um, lastly, there's a book um, by the National Audubon Society called Birding Adventures for Kids. And that's just a really great family friendly um, book about um, activities that you can do as a family um, to help you enjoy birds and learn more about birds, uh, scavenger hunts, games, and uh, crafting activities and things like that. Um, so those are all some th that I would recommend. And uh, yeah, there's also free bird ID apps on your phone and things like that too. Great, thank you. So I'm gonna put those recommendations and um, some other links to the Audubon website and so forth. So I'm going to put that in the description for this video, so check that out. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for talking with me here today. I'm so excited to share this video with all the kids of Seattle. Um, I think they're really gonna enjoy the call to action to go outside and look at birds. Um, is there anything else you wanna share before we say goodbye? Um, just have fun. Birds are all around us. You don't have to go very far to find them. So you just have to step outside your window. Honestly, you, you, you all you have to do is open your window and just mm -hmm. listen for birds. So birding is so easy for everybody to do. And it's so fun. And once you get into it, I think you'll find that it's pretty addictive. Yeah, definitely. What Hannah said, um, you know, I've been birding for a few years now. And you think that after a while, you've seen all the birds and Every day could be something completely different um, when you're bird watching and looking at birds, and, and that's really exciting to me. So just have fun with it. Yay, good advice. All right, well, thank you, and I will say goodbye to y'all now. There you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to make your own Seattle bird reports, even if it's just by looking out your window or if it's going on a walk in your neighborhood. You can find more about birds um, and our environment from ebooks that you can download at spl.org. And I also want to take a moment to end our video by saying that Black Lives Matter. And you can visit the audubon.org. Um, they had a news release about Black Birders Week that happened earlier in June. And you can also find anti racist resources on the library's website. We have a couple of great book lists. All right, stay safe out there. Bye.